I actually worked right here in, in the Valley. I worked at a company called VLSI Technology, who, uh, kind of a competitor of Intel. Who, who's laughing? <laughs> Somebody know my work over there? He works for VLSI, oh my gosh. You can tell my chips that when they boot them up, it says, knock, knock. That's how you can tell it's my chip. <laughs> That's what I did. I designed uh, chips, which uh, got to be kind of scary for VLSI, really. People bringing back chips and boards going, who designed this, some comedian? <laughs> As a matter of fact, yes. Why, hello there. You have arrived at Comedy in Place. It is the comedy show that comes to you from my office right here at my home in Southern California. Uh, my name is Don McMillan. I am your host. I hope you're doing well today. Thanks for joining us. Today, I thought I'd share another story from my days as an engineer in Silicon Valley. A true story. I'm going to get to it in a second. I'm calling it When Engineering Met Sales. This was the day when I, as an engineer, I never liked sales before, but this is the day an engineer, my engineering sales guy, his name is Bob, I won't give his last name, uh, saved me, completely saved me, made me appreciate sales. He just totally saved my butt. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, stick around at the end of today's show, another a clip from a live comedy show with a real live studio audience with people really laughing. So I know that stuff's funny because I can't hear you laugh here in my office, but I think this is a funny story. So let's get to it, my comedy in place bit. And uh, here's what happened. Uh, There's a big project, big chip design for this company. Uh, I can't tell you the uh, name of the company. I'll just say um, it starts with L and uh, it rhymes with uh, Rockheed. That's all I'll tell you. Uh, big program, big program. And we were designing chips for them. And the prototypes were about to come out of our chip design. And uh, they needed the parts right away. Now, here's why I have to explain. This is when it gets really nerdy. I've actually prepared PowerPoint slides for this exact part. Because you need to understand something about the chip design process. When we design a chip, uh, we design on wafers. This is silicon wafer. This is where a silicon chip is on the wafer. And you have multiple chips on any single wafer. Each one of those little squares is one of my chips. Now, I've designed the chip. Now, at this point, what you have to do is, is slice up the wafer. You have to slice and dice it. And so you get each little chip off. Uh, and you take each chip, and then you put it in a package, right? You put it in a package inside. You'll see these on the little computer boards, right? And inside that package, just so you know, I'll look inside. There's the chip sitting there, and then it's wire bonded. I have a little diagram there. Wire bond out from the chip to the package. And then there's wires from the package to the circuit board, right? So that way they can test their circuit board. That's how the chip gets from the wafer, the silicon wafer, into the package. It's important to remember that process right there is going to come in important. I'm going to keep this slide up on the side in just a second, but you need to understand that part. It's going to get funny, I promise. Uh, but I, this is the nerdiest bit ever. I have to explain the chip design process. So back to the company. So they need these parts right away. Their system tests are way behind. So what we do is we do what's called cut and goes. And what this is, is we uh, diced up the wafer, as I showed you, and we packaged them up, and then we shipped them to the customer uh, right away. We didn't test them. We didn't take the time to test them. It would take another two or three days. And we told them this. We didn't lie to them. We told, said, these are untested, but you can try all 20 parts. One of them might work, and then you can do your system tests and, and catch up a couple of days, right? So they knew they were cut and goes, untested cut and goes. They were cool. We, in the meantime, uh, our engineering people took the 20 cut and goes that we got. We gave them 20. We took 20. And we took them back to our tester to test out the test program. And uh, our guys are trying, and nothing's working. Our, nothing's working on the test program. So finally, I popped the lid on one of the packages, and I notice that we have not bonded the chip out to the package in manufacturing. No, the chip is just sitting in there, not connected to the package. There's no wires from the chip to the package, which is really going to cut back on functionality. No. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, the power consumption is going to be incredibly low, but the chip doesn't, doesn't run so well uh, when you don't wire uh, the chip out to the package. That really hurts functionality. So I'm like, oh, my God, what are we going to do? So uh, I got to tell the customer, but I, said, well, I, I should tell my sales guy. So I call Bob, our sales guy, over, and I go, Bob, look, uh, we couldn't get any of the cut and goes to work in the lab. And uh, one of the guys, we popped off the lid, and uh, we, we didn't bond the chip out to the package and uh, probably not going to work for the customer. Very small chance, very small chance it's going to work for the customer. And Bob goes, really? You're sure? Yeah, I'm positive. And he goes, okay, we got a meeting one tomorrow. I'll handle it, okay? If they ask about this, they might not. You never know. Maybe it worked for them. Who knows? He goes, if, if they ask about this, just just throw it to me. I'll handle it. Just throw it to me. And I said, okay, great. You know, taking all the pressure off of me. So sure enough, the next day, all their engineers come in. Big meeting. Uh, there are like 20 engineers in their design team and their project leaders sitting right across from me. And then all our guys are on my side and I'm behind me. And uh their project leader looks right at me and he goes, you know, uh, 
we tried at the chips, the cut and goes you sent us, and uh, and none of them worked. None of them, not not one worked. And uh, one of our guys popped the lid, and uh, none of the chips are bonded out to the package, man. They're not bonded out to the package. And I went, really? Uh, Bob, you want to handle this? And I threw it right to Bob. And Bob, I swear, Bob looks right at the guy and goes, oh, you wanted them bonded? <laughs> Their project leader just about turned white, man. And Bob goes, oh, we just wanted to get you the parts right away. We didn't want to take the time to bond them. Yeah, I thought you needed them right away. We can bond them. We can. Get, we can. It'll take another couple of days, and we'll have to pay an expedite fee to bond them quickly, another thousand dollars. But we can get them to you. We didn't know. You didn't tell us to bond them. Isn't that amazing? He saved us. We totally messed up. He saved us and made a thousand dollars. That is a great sale. That's when I knew that a salesperson and an engineer could get along. I fell in love with Bob that day. That's when engineering met sales. So I hope you enjoyed that story. Uh, if you didn't, there's, a, there's another uh, comedy co bit coming up. It filmed in front of a live studio audience with real laughs. I know it's funny. You, you might have found that funny. I wish I could hear you laugh, but I can't because, you know, we're stuck in place. Uh, in the meantime, uh, be well, keep laughing, and here comes your video. I had to do a lot of that team building stuff. Do you guys ever do that? Where you have to go, like, and do these stupid exercises to get closer to your fellow employees? <laughs> yeah, people have been through this. This one we did, we had to build a raft. They broke us up into groups, and we had to build a raft from raw materials. The problem was they broke us up into groups. They broke sales into one group, marketing into another group, and the engineers into another group. <laughs> yeah, huge mistake, really. Because, like, the boats came out completely different. The engineers, like, put every bell and whistle and feature on the raft, and it, uh, it sunk. <laughs> but, man, it looked cool going down. <laughs> Marketing people, they just made uh, 150 slides of what the raft should look like and never actually built the raft. <laughs> and the, uh, the sales guys, they uh, sold the raw materials and threw a party. So. <laughs> I thought that was the best solution right there.